you know, you're killing me with all these choices. So all I needed was deodorant. The exact type was Dove Men Care Extra Fresh Gray Packaging with Light Green Square on the label, and I've been using it for years. But when I got to Target, I was faced with a tsunami of choices. Dove alone had dozens of deodorant options, and the differences in the packaging were only slight. I had to lie down in the aisle and take a nap and then make a choice. Okay, I'm lying about the nap, but I'm sure you could experience the same thing. We have far too many choices with everything, food, clothing, entertainment, business products, and tools. We're reaching a point where it's impacting our sanity, and I think I have a solution. Lots of choices isn't a great thing. If you listen to Tim Ferriss's podcast, which I highly recommend, you'll often hear about the paradox of choice, and here's the definition. It stipulates that while we might believe that being presented with multiple options actually makes it easier to choose one that we're happy with, and thus increases customer satisfaction, having an abundance of options actually requires more effort to make a decision and can leave us feeling unsatisfied with our choice. More effort to make a decision, which means more time and more distraction, and the quote continues. When the number of choices increases, so does the difficulty of knowing what is best. Instead of increasing our freedom to have what we want, the paradox of choice suggests that having too many choices actually limits our freedom. Many people believe that having dozens or hundreds of choices is a good thing. Turns out it may not be. Not sure if you're buying the argument? Let's think about investing. So here's a recent quote from CNBC on the subject of complexity is harming investors. As more cutting-edge investment products work their way into the marketplace, there's a growing real fear that retail investors and even professional brokers are getting in over their heads. Now, if you note the end of that sentence, it's important. Investing may be too complex for professional brokers, those who make do investing for a living. Complex product offerings is part of the problem. A second quote, FINRA, the regulatory agency, considers leveraged and inverse ETFs, equity indexed annuities, and reverse convertibles as complex products. I was in the investment business for years. I stay informed, and I've never heard of an inverse EFT. I guess the joke's on me. There's simply too many choices. Consider this. The more investment choices there are, the more your investment advisor must learn and monitor to stay informed. So how many investment choices are out there? Mutual funds, they're straightforward, right? Over the past 40 years, individual investors have used mutual funds with great success. However, Statista reports that there are over 126,000 mutual funds as of 2020. What about exchange-traded funds or ETFs, another investment product used by individual investors? The same source reports over 2,200 ETFs in the U.S. alone. Warren Buffett, the, possibly the world's most successful investor, says, don't invest in a business you don't understand. With so many choices, it's hard to make decisions and understand in your investments. Is your insurance, insurance agent or CPA soliciting your investment business? If so, you're not alone. There's just too many advisors in the late 90s and early 2000s. I trained over 1,000 people in a crash course to become licensed as investment advisors through FINRA, the regulatory agency I mentioned. I work for a company that is now part of Kaplan, and I taught a 40-hour course once a month, and it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. Many of the people in that class were CPAs and insurance agents who were moving into the investment advisory field. This trend caused confusion for investors because professionals in other fields are now licensed as investment advisors. Wait, I thought Bob was an insurance agent. Why is he asking about my retirement plan? Too many investment choices, too many advisors, so what's the answer? Find one advisor and stick with them. That's my two cents. Keep it simple. Don't do business with multiple advisors, which is what many people do. I'm not here to give investment advice, so find one professional for the long term. Wow, that makes me feel better. I'm continually amazed by the number of companies selling a product or service in a niche, even a tiny niche. Is everyone selling the same product? Let's start bigger. How about dog food? According to this industry source, 68% of U.S. homes own a pet, spend an average of $300 annually on pet foods and treats. The market is expected to reach $30 billion by 2022. That's a pretty big market. That's a lot of Alpo. And you might remember when Ed McMahon used to do live commercial shots on The Tonight Show. They'd have a dog live on the set eating the food while he did the spots. And you can see a link here to a commercial if you want to take a look from the early 80s. 
Another quote from the same source, pet food and treat options available have exploded in recent years, and the total number of brands now tops 630. Amazing. Given the overload of choices, why would anyone want to change the brand they buy? Interestingly, the number one reason why customers change brands, poor customer service. Okay, I get it. As long as the brand doesn't drop the ball, I'll stick with what I normally buy, and that applies to just about everything. The decision that eliminates 100 future decisions. One of my favorite quotes. This is from Tim Ferriss, who talks about it frequently. I embrace it. Here are some future decisions I've eliminated. Same clothes. Unless it's a special event, a dinner, a wedding, or a funeral, I wear hiking pants and rotate a small number of shirts and sweaters depending on the weather. If it's warm outside, I unzip the bottom of my hiking pants and wear the shorts. Same food. If I'm home, I eat the exact same thing for breakfast and lunch seven days a week. Don't you get tired of it, you may ask? No, because I don't need to think about what I eat for those meals. Shopping, and we get everything delivered, is easy because my food choices don't change. I'd rather eliminate the decision to simplify my life. So who's with me? Who wants to embrace the simple and reduce the need for choices? And that's food for thought.